Hey, what's up everyone? John here with Web Dev for You, here to help you build awesome websites without code in Webflow. Uh, so if you're new to these live streams, I do these uh, live streams every Monday through Thursday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Central. And uh, we go over everything Webflow, how to build entire websites in Webflow. We go over uh, various design systems in Webflow and styling systems. Um, we also go over how to build interactions and animations in Webflow. And if you need help with a personal project, I provide support via the YouTube Super Chat feature um, right here in the chat. Um, so that's why it's called a, a Super Chat because um, I kind of focus on the idea that you can get help with your web, uh, Webflow projects via Super Chat. Uh, hey Dale, how's it going? Uh, nice. So we're going to continue from yesterday's uh, build. So if you saw yesterday's build, um, we built out this menu here uh, where we click and it comes in. We have these menu items. So one thing I added is I added sound effects to the menu items. So if we hover, we have a little sound effect that plays. So today I want to show you how to add sound effects to your website. Um, you do want to keep sound effects minimal because I know plenty of websites that go a little bit overboard with, you know, a lot of music and um, things like that. So you just kind of want to be careful when using this feature. Uh, you, you can make it a bit subtle, um, you know, and not too loud so that if the user does have their speaker like really loud, it doesn't become obtrusive when the sound effect plays. Uh, hey Rashid, hello. Hi Tazaware. Uh, nice. So so yeah, we're just gonna add sound effects. Uh, we're also so this menu was inspired by this website here, Lion Moran Interiors. I'll go ahead and go ahead and paste it in chat. It's just a really interesting menu. So the menu was inspired off this, and along with the sound effects, we're gonna create this menu button here. Um, so it's kind of an animated menu button, but we can do that in Webflow, and that should be uh, a lot of fun as well. So we'll go ahead and start with the sound effects. Um, so to add sound effects, it's pretty straightforward. The only difficult part of adding sound effects is you need your own hosting to upload the audio file. Um, I did look up if there's other ways to upload the audio file, like to Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that and nothing quite seemed to work. Maybe I wasn't doing it correctly, but, um, and I can do a quick search here, um, upload, because in Webflow you can't upload audio files, you can only upload specific assets like images, PDFs, and things like that, and GIFs. Um, but there might be a forum post uh, on how to upload audio files, but I don't think there is. Um, there's a Reddit post here. Yeah, uh, SoundCloud Dropbox did not work. Uh, upload Care. Somebody mentioned Upload Care. And Amazon S3 Bucket. So I might look more into that, but I use my own hosting because I do have a hosting service. So I just uploaded the audio files to that hosting service and I was able to access it. So this will become a bit more clear as I go through this tutorial. Uh, but let's just jump right into it. Let's go to howler.js. That's the script I'm using for audio. Um, so it's howler.js. It's an audio library for the modern web. Um, howler.js makes working with audio and JavaScript easy and reliable across all platforms. Um, so I'm just going to remove this code for now. This is the code we're going to be using. And we'll start from scratch uh, so I can explain everything as we go along. Um, new file. Let me just paste this code in here. Okay, so all right, so I have the code here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do if we if we want to use uh, Howler.js is we need to access the script, right? So as I mentioned in previous streams, uh, you don't want to paste an entire script in the in the head section of the code or, or in the body section because Webflow only allows for 10,000 characters in each section and some most scripts are more than 10,000 characters or a lot of them are 
So what you want to do is grab the script from a CDN. So you just need one line or one URL. Yeah, basically one line of code to access that script. So I like using JS Deliver for my scripts. Um, it's a CDN uh, for open source scripts. And you can just type in howler.js. It's the first one that comes up. We'll go ahead and click it. Then you want to make sure that this first uh, howler.min.js is toggled on. You can click on show and configure all links. Select HTML output. So you want HTML output and auto optimization on. And then we can copy this script code here. Um, so script source and then the, the URL or the, uh, the script. Then I'll go back into Webflow. Let's go into the custom code. And before the body tag, we'll paste that script in there. And that's it. So now we have access to the script. We can use it in our project. So now let's go to howler.js. I'll go to the docs. And to initiate uh, howler.js, it's fairly straightforward. Um, it tells you all the different uh, options here. Um, so we want to initiate uh, the, the howler.js. We want to apply it to a variable. So variable sound equals new howl, then the source, which is the MP3 file. And then um, they have a few different other par parameters like loop, volume. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, autoplay, loop, volume, and you can trigger it with different functions. So I'll just go ahead and copy this first one, the real basic one, variable sound, variable sound equals new howl, and then the source. So we'll go into Webflow, I'll paste or I'll open up a script tag, paste that code in there, and then I'll close the script tag. Uh, so here where it says uh, variable sound and then the source, this is where I need to upload my audio file to my hosting uh, service. And yeah, there might be, like if there's a CDN, you can probably access the audio file from the CDN. And maybe I'll cover that tomorrow. If I have time, I'll try to research it to see if we can do it, but it was very simple for me to upload it to my hosting, so I just did that. Um, and basically, I just used a domain that I'm not really using and a folder and just added the audio to that folder. So um, I'm not gonna go ahead and read out the URL name. If you wanna look at it, it's fine. Images and um, we have the audio file. So I'll use, I uploaded a few different ones. Let's use space alarm. So uh, .mp3. So the audio file needs to end in MP3, in MP3 for it to work correctly. So you just want to make sure that the source has an MP3 file here. Uh, again, because you can't upload audio files to Webflow. If it was images, it would be another story. You could upload the image to Webflow and then get the image URL, but it's a little bit different with audio. Okay, so this is where I'm going to copy and paste this script. Oh, I'm also going to change the volume. So this is a great feature of Howler.js. You can type in volume, um, and then the default volume is 0.5. So let's say I wanted it to be a fifth of, or almost half. I'll, I'll say, or let's say half, 0.25 um, for the volume. And that'll um, turn the volume down. And then uh, what I want to do now, now that we have this function here, we initiated howl. I'm going to add this code. So let me just copy it here. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so basically what I'm doing here, I'm accessing the menu item wrapper. So for the menu, it's the, the text is in a menu item wrapper. That's the class name I gave it. Then on mouse enter or hover, we create the function where we stop the sound, make sure that it's stopped initially, and then we play it. Um, so we, the reason we stop it, yeah, so it starts, it starts from the beginning. So stop and then play. Otherwise, if, if we didn't have the stop initially, the audio, the audio will play from where it last left off, I believe. So we want to stop it and then play it. And then on mouse leave, um, I have sound off, but you can also do sound stop and on mouse leave the sound will stop but if you do like off or just remove this entirely this mouse leave then the audio would just play regardless um, so we actually don't need this code if we 
didn't want to stop the sound, but I'll leave it there just for a second. Actually, let's remove it because we don't actually need it right now. So I'm going to remove this piece of code. And yeah, that, so that's all we need. So I'll save and then I'll publish. So again, this project will be clonable by the time you know we finish embellishing it and doing a bunch of stuff to it. So now I'll preview, open, I hover. All right, so this, that's kind of an eerie sound, uh, but I kind of like it because I want to go in a weird alien, eerie type of vibe for the site because some of the the font is kind of like alien in a way, like the A and the R, and it's just a really unique font. So not my favorite sound, I might change it, but let's just roll with that. But as you can see, we added a sound effect. It's a little bit loud. So let me go back into the code and let me change the volume to like 0.15. All right, and let's try something else. Let's, let me paste back that code that I initially removed and let's do sound stop. So when on mouse leave, it'll stop the sound. And I just wanna showcase this, but it won't sound good because the sound will get cut off. So like, if I preview, you see? It kind of works. I mean, it kind of depends what you're going for, right? Like, do you want to stop the sound when the user uh, mouses off the, the menu item? All right, so that's pretty straightforward, just quick. You know, you can add audio effects to a site very easily. You just need to make sure you have a hosting service to upload the audio. In my case, I had hosting, so I just uploaded it there. Um, and then just a few parameters, the source, the volume. Um, then we created this function. So we said when we hover over the specific element, um, yeah, mouse enter, we're gonna stop the sound and then we'll play it. And that's how we get a hover audio effect. And that's using howler.js. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, we can move on to the next thing, which is um, the menu button. So I'll go ahead and hide this menu wrapper for now and let's focus on this menu button open so we want to create this effect when we click the hamburger menu items come together and then they rotate really fast and create an x so let's do that let's first make this menu button let's remove the background color and let's give it a border of black right now let's make it really big so we can see this as I'm building it. Um, so I'll make it 200 by 200 so we have this big circle. And I'll set the display setting to flex, center, center. I'll add a div and we'll call this menu, menu button line. We'll set the width to 70%. 70 might be too big, maybe 50%. Um, I enjoy the addition of a wee bit of code functionality. Never thought I'd say that. Yeah, for sure. I know we're supposed to be like no code, but code can be cool sometimes for things that Webflow doesn't offer natively. Um, we can definitely do a lot with code. Um, so let's say make this line two pixels and we'll set the background color to black for now. And let's set the border radius to like 30. So we have rounded edges to this line. Okay, so I'll copy and paste this line, or actually I'll set the line to a position of absolute. Yeah, absolute, okay. And then I'll copy and paste this line three times, one, two, or two times. So we have three lines. Then for the second line, I'll say menu uh, button line two, and I'll move it up. Let's say, yeah, let's say 80. Or maybe I could use a percentage, 2%. No, that's too much. 1%, no. So I'll use pixels. So we'll move it up. Um, 20, or 80, move it up 80. And then this bottom line, we'll say three. And we'll move this down 80. Okay, so there's our menu button. And let me just take a look at the site for reference, just to see. 
Uh, they have a bit more space there. I want to, uh, yeah. So let's do a hundred. You know what? I'm not going to use um, this. Let me use margin instead. No, never mind. Okay, so two, we'll use the auto positioning. All right, so let's do 70 and 70. Uh, 80, 80 was good. Okay, 80 and 80. All right, so there's our menu button. Um, now what we want to do is create an interaction. So when we click on the menu button open, let's go to interactions and on mouse click. So we're opening the menu. Let's see, can I have two interactions on? No. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, okay, so menu open. So we'll bring the bottom and the top line together. So we'll move it down 80 pixels. So I'll say, I'll select this top line. We'll say move and we'll move it down. Uh, this might be a little bit difficult with the menu, but let's try it. Move it down 80 pixels. And uh, let's see, we'll start it up here. Okay, yeah. Oh no, we'll move it to zero or 40. What? Yeah, that's getting a little bit. Move down. Mm. Okay, I have an idea. Okay, let's delete this. And rather than moving, rather than using the absolute positioning, we're going to do it in the interaction. So select the menu open button, go back to mouse click, and then we'll grab the second line. We'll move it, let's say negative 80 on the Y axis, and I'll set it as the initial state. See, that's too too far. So we're gonna move it negative, what, 20? Yeah, negative 20, okay. Set it as the initial state, we'll do selected element, then we'll select this menu button line. We'll move it down 20, and we'll set it as the initial state, and we'll just do selected element. Okay, so now this is how our menu button looks. That's great. And now I will select the top line. We'll say menu button move. We'll move it to zero on the Y. We'll say ease for the easing. Duration of, let's say, 0.3. And then we'll grab the bottom line. We'll move it to zero. And we'll start these together, duration of 0.3 and the easing of ease. Okay, so if I play that, you see that the, the lines come together and that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I'll save, okay. And now we wanna rotate the those two lines. So I'll grab the top line and I will rotate it let's do 360 plus 145 or, uh, here I'll just do it real quick 360 maths is always fun no 180 obviously oh no but we need to do it needs to end up on a 45 degree angle so 360 plus 45 so 405 so we're going to rotate on the Z we're going to rotate it 405 degrees and we're going to do bounce past okay so that's not bad so let's try bounce bounce I said that weird or let's try easing out elastic let's try that Mm, swing from two. I'm just trying to get that. Yeah, it's not bad. Let's do bounce past. That's not bad either. Maybe one second. Uh, I think elastic is is the one. 
Uh, let's try. Yeah, let's try bounce. All right, we'll do bounce past for now. Uh, Isaiah writes, "Thank you." Question: What tutorials on your channel that you do that cover the basics? I appreciate your delivery and your approach. Would like to see more content with you, for sure, Isaiah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I cover basics that often, to be honest. Well, yeah, in, in my layout builds. So if you look at my past previous live streams. I do a lot of layout builds, and that covers a lot of the basics of Webflow. Um, if you're starting out with Webflow, I always recommend the Webflow Crash Course, uh, the 101 Crash Course, because it just covers like, you know, getting started with Webflow. Um, but yeah, if you watch my live streams every day, um, you'll start to pick up things. Uh, and you, you can also ask me questions, like basic questions throughout the live stream, and I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kavita wrote, um, I understand CSS the more I use Webflow than when I was learning coding. Yeah, for sure. Definitely get that. Um, okay, so we rotated it 45 degrees. The other line, so we'll select the third line, we'll say rotate. We'll start it with this one and we'll rotate it. Would it be negative 405? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. The timing is off here, so this is one second. So this would need to be one second as well. Bounce past. <laughs> That's interesting. All right. Um, so it moves. Yeah, and then we're going to select this middle line and we're going to set the opacity to 0% and selected element and just start it like this. So we, yeah, perfect. Uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, open button, but we'll roll with it. We're not gonna get too picky here. Okay, so we have the menu button. Um, we'll just reverse it on the close. So we're only gonna have one menu button for the open and close. Now let's get a little bit more creative. Let's go to Unsplash. Because I want to make this kind of an eerie looking site, I'm just going to do abstract dark. See what comes up. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. And I'll just spend a few seconds here trying to find something interesting. This is kind of cool. We'll, we'll roll with this. Uh, let's see. Oh, what's this? That's cool. Um, kind of like this. And abstract alien. Um, something. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool picture. I like that. Um, Wow, a lot of cool, cool pictures. Daft Punk, dope. All right, so we have a few to work with here. Let me just minimize these or resize them. Make sure they're not too big. And which one do I want to use? Yeah, let's use this one. Preview, tools, adjust size. What's the size of this? Um, I'll say 1500. Yeah, let's roll with that. Okay, so let's go into Webflow. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and position this button in the upper right. So position, or actually let's create, oh, it is in a section, great. So position absolute and top right. Okay, and we're gonna make it smaller, definitely. But uh, let's see here. So I wanna add a div block in here. We'll say position absolute and full. And we'll say um, content, that yeah, content wrapper. Okay, and then we'll we'll use grid for this. We'll say grid. Let's make it one column or one row. And we'll have a left and a right side. Okay, so on the left side, I'll add the image. So div block, and I'll say content dash image, and then I will. 
drag and drop that image. We'll try a few different images, but we'll start with this one. Oh, Joey, thank you. Uh, Eric, yeah, I, I gave it some thought. Um, I guess I haven't fully decided on th the Discord, but I'm starting to lean towards yeah on that. Uh, so Echoed wrote, Joey, I appreciate it, the, the super chat. Echoed wrote, hey, John, it seems that learning Webflow in a way is kind of cheating, taking a shorter route rather than if I were to learn HTML, CSS, J JS the proper way. What's your take on this? Um, I, I don't agree with that necessarily, Echoed. Um, because I, I personally know CSS, HTML, and, and a bit of JavaScript. Uh, and that only helps if you get into Webflow, because Webflow, is, it's not like it's like a really cookie cutter way of building a site. You still need to know some web design and development concepts, but the code that Webflow outputs is very clean, and it's pretty one-to-one -one as if a developer would, were to build it. Yeah, there might be a little bit extra JavaScript to make it work correctly, but not anything that's really out there as far as the size of the JavaScript file. So you're still using web design and development concepts. You're still using things like Flexbox, CSS styling, and all that, all those concepts. Um, so I don't feel like it's really a shortcut. Uh, I will say that if you do have some experience with coding prior to getting into Webflow, that does help a lot. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. That does help with wrapping your mind around these web development concepts. It's not a prerequisite to using Webflow, but it does help. Um, in no way do I think it's a shortcut because that's why I love Webflow because I feel that it's so closely related and so tied in to actual web development that it doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like a shortcut, shortcut at all. To me, it just feels like a faster way to build a site and, and, and you get to do it visually rather than having to type everything with code. Um, so yeah, that's just my take. Uh, yeah, and many many have found that. I've seen quite a few posts that after they started using Webflow, they understood code even more. So it is, it is a nice gateway uh, to learning even more code. And you can add custom code to Webflow too. So it's pretty unlimited. I just find it like a faster way to build. And someone who doesn't want to take the time to like learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or even a designer who like works in Figma and doesn't want to take the time to learn all the, that code, they can jump into Webflow learn a few web design and development concepts and start building their site, you know, right away. Uh, so that, yeah, that's just my take, uh, echoed. Kavita, yes indeed, it's almost a paradox, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I definitely agree with that, Manol. Like, it's like a paradox for sure, which makes workflow so cool. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, definitely, Eric. Yep. Uh, cool. So I could harp on that for quite a while, so I'll just leave it at that. But, but yeah, that's my take on it. Um, so let's add the image. I'm gonna add it as a background. Um, yeah, choose image, and we'll just add it like this. We'll say cover. I'll position it to the left. Yeah, that image is a bit weird. I don't know if I like it. Um, so we'll add another. Uh, let's try that again. Close my tab. All right, we'll add another div block and we'll call this content uh, heading or something like that, content text, I guess. And here we'll add the heading and for the content text, let's set it to flex uh, center. And we'll, for the type, we'll use um, the major mono display that we used for the menu items and we'll just adjust the uh, the text here. So I'll say, what was, I had a heading that I wanted to use for today. It's kind of tacky, I think, but wait, web design, building sites that are not from here. <laughs> it's tacky, I know. Uh, if you have a better name, let me know. Something that goes with that far out theme. Um, do two for the line height. Building sites, building websites that are not from here. And make it a bit larger. I'm gonna change this image, I don't like it. It's, 
a little bit too much color or something. Let's try a different one. Yeah, let's do this one. Adjust size, uh, 1920. Okay, I'll add this image in here. Boop. There we go, okay. Let's replace it. And I'll make, actually I'll make this text white. No, the text white. And we'll make this background black. And for the grid, we'll remove, or the section, we'll make it black. We do want a gap in there. Okay, so the section, we'll set it to, actually, is that gonna work? Huh, let's work with the colors a bit. I'm gonna change a few colors um, on everything. So we'll start black initially, and then we'll go to white. So we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'll read all the chats in a second. Uh, so we're totally gonna switch up the design of this site. This should be fun. Um, so let me bring back the menu wrapper and we'll just take a look, set it to display flex or display block. It should be in front. So let me set the Z index to 999. Okay, um, we have the menu wrapper, great. Um, so I'm gonna change the bars of the menu wrapper. I'm gonna change the bars to, where the bars at? Here we go, to white. And I'm gonna change the letters to black. All right, so let's see how that looks. And I have to bring the menu open button to the front, so this should have a much higher Z index. All right. So the audio is not working here, but that's cool. All right, so yeah, so let's see here. Um, Let's work on the design a bit, but we'll get there. It's looking a little bit off, but uh, yeah. So we have the button here. Let's make it a lot smaller. So 50 by 50 and let's see if it's still okay. So we have to adjust the positioning, right? Okay. So let's try, yeah, 50 by 50 is good. And then we'll just move it a little bit like this. We'll say 30 pixels from the top and 30 pixels from the right, maybe 40. And for the grid, I'm gonna add more, more uh, column spacing. So let's do 40. All right, that's cool. So we go into the interaction, menu open. Um, the line, so we're just gonna move it maybe negative eight. Negative eight. Yeah, that should work. Negative eight and eight, because we made it smaller. Yeah, perfect. So we have our menu button. Um, cool. So now we need to go into, um, yeah, on second click, we'll start an animation. We'll say menu close, we'll open it. And this is where I have to kind of re-add some animations. So the second line, we're gonna rotate it. Let's see, uh, menu item wrapper. Yeah, we're gonna rotate it back to zero. And I think I used one second in an easing of ease. And we'll do selected element. So this might not work correctly. I'm just kind of winging it a little bit here. Rotate back to zero, ease, and one second. 
and we'll do selected element and then we'll move it back to uh, no uh, the second line no that's the third line we'll grab the second line right here here let me delete this second line move it back to negative eight and then the third line will move it back to eight. Okay, and let me go into the open and just see what I did. So move, move, point three, point three, and the rotate was one. Okay, so point three, and this should be ease. I never like using uh, linear for any of my animations. Okay, so save. So the rotate is one and the movement is 0.3 and ease. And then the first line will say opacity. So I'm just reversing everything I did. We'll say opacity 100%, ease and a duration of 0.3. Um, and we'll do selected element. All right, so let's see what we got there. Okay, definitely not what I wanted. Uh, we have to move it first, yeah, and then rotate it. So move it. No, we need to rotate it first. Uh, let's see. Yeah, menu line, rotate, rotate to zero. Oh, I need to rotate it on the Z, not the Y. Doi. And then move, move. Okay. All right, so the timing is a little bit off. But we're getting there. Okay, so let me just do this and duration will just say zero. Okay, so let me go to the menu open. So the menu button, let's see, hide show, move, move, menu bar, menu item wrapper, uh, menu bar moves, okay. So yeah, this would all need to start together um hmm let's see yeah it's getting a bit in depth now so rotate okay rotate yeah i would need to start all of these together okay so that's going to be intense no, well, not really. Okay, so we the, the animation starts, it rotates, and at the same time, so these these will start together, the rotation and the movement, but the rotate will be delayed by one second, and we'll hide and show the menu. Let's see, so I click. Yeah. Um, So this should actually go here. Wait, let me undo that. I want to select this one. So I want to select these. These should go under here. That's great. And this should be start here. And this should be zero point one and point all right, let's try it. Yeah, that's good. And then uh, the rotation shouldn't have such a long delay. So the, the rotation should be, the movement is 0.3, so the rotation should have a delay of 0.3. Perfect. Ooh, that was dope. Yeah, I think that's it. I even like how it closes. That's a really nice movement. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that because it's kind of like interesting. It doesn't rotate right away, but I'm okay with that. Like at the end. And I'm going to change that sound effect. It's kind of obnoxious. So we'll do a nice lighter sound effect. And I'm going to read some chats in a second. Um, and one more time, let's try a different image. I know we can find a cool one. Um, yeah, let's do this purple one. Well, let's see, what's this image here? No, oh, that's weird. I don't know what that is, but... All right, let's just try... Yeah, we'll do this one. Uh, just make it a little bit smaller. Um, something like that. All right, cool. Nice, so we have the menu button, turns into an X, and we close it. Looks awesome. So what I'm gonna do, we have a close button in the menu wrapper, which don't think we need anymore, so I'm just gonna hide it for now. Yeah, we don't need it. Um, great. All right, so let me get to some chats. So uh, Kavita wrote, I know, right, I'm a visual learner. Yep, cool. Talking about Webflow helping with CSS. And and yeah, uh, Webflow does make it easy to articulate ideas for sure. Uh, Richard wrote, I come from a design background and found Webflow has helped me understand structures on the web and that all designs are web friendly. And that all designs aren't web friendly. Gotcha. Uh, so Echo wrote, thanks for answering, but is it possible to apply CSS architecture techniques to Webflow? BEM and atomic design are the kinds of apps that are being built on Webflow don't require this. Uh, so yeah, like the BEM, so I'm, I'm kind of guessing or assuming that you're, you're um, talking more about class naming and things like that. Uh, and, and yeah, that can be applied to Webflow. Like you can choose what to name your classes. Um, and there are many different design systems that talk about that. Like I just went over the client first system and they use a similar approach to the BEM model as far as class naming convention. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by atomic design. Um, maybe you mean like web apps or, you know, sites that can do more. Um, you know, I think web, that's the goal of Webflow. Webflow's goal is to be able to achieve a lot more, like to build web apps in Webflow where you can integrate all these interesting things. Um, but it's not quite there yet. So a lot of times we, you know, <clears throat> it's recommended to use things like Zapier or uh, <clears throat> Parabola to integrate third party applications into Webflow via the a API. Uh, so Webflow does have an API. Like if you go to the um, Webflow API and you just take a look, um, they do have an API that allows you to hook into other applications and you can hook in the, the CMS to other applications and it's pretty unlimited what you can do with it. Um, so Manuel wrote, yeah, that's kind of what I mentioned. Those are basically about CSS name conventions, right? I'm not sure if so, then yes, you, you are still completely free about how to use CSS in Webflow and how to name classes, etc. cetera. Uh, then Echo wrote, uh, yeah, uh, conventions to keep apps scalable and components reusable across front end, but once you export code, it won't have conventions applied that you may want that you may want your new Arc app to have. Um, yeah, the class naming stays relevant. So I, I can showcase, for example, like on this site, if I were to export the code, we can take a look at the code and just see, you know, um, the different class naming. So you can see like all the class names I applied are here and if you use like capital case letters it man like webflow automatically converts it to 
lowercase and puts dashes instead of spaces. Um, but you can see all the code here, the CSS, it's all in there. The JavaScript is all in there and uh, it includes the assets as well. So if I were to export it and download the zip file, I can show this project. So I have the folder here, let me open it. And so I have the folder, we have the, the index HTML. Um, you know, everything works fine. That's the new audio I added. Um, and let's go back into the finder. Um, it has a JavaScript, the, the CSS, <coughs> excuse me. So I can open up the CSS with a code editor and it's all in here. So pretty much like a, if a developer were to hand code the site, this is what it would look like. And that's why I love Webflow because the code it outputs is very clean. Like to me, this is like a, a developer were to create this with, you know, by coding. Um, so if you want to use this code and implement it into your own apps, you know, rather than using Webflow in house or um, natively, you can export the code and use the code on your project. Um, there's Webflow CSS as well, which is more like default styling. Um, you know, the headers and all the styles you need for the site are, are here. So that's all good. And then the, the JavaScript as well. So you can export the code and hook in other JavaScript and all that good stuff. So it's all here. It is minified. So I think there might be a way to unminify it. Um, or you could use like an unminifier. Um, yeah, but yeah, you can do all that, like export code and, you know, do, do whatever you'd like with it pretty much or hook in other things. But I personally like working with Webflow natively because um, I just find it really useful, like all the hosting natively. Um, you know, if I need a third party application, I just use custom code. If I really need to, you know, need to hook in a, a third party system, I can use the API as well. Um, so if you type in Zapier and Webflow, you know, there's a nice article on it. Uh, let's go back in here. Let's see, Zapier integration. Yep, so uh, yeah, it's webflow.com integration slash Zapier. And it kind of showcases, showcases what you can do with uh, Zapier and Webflow. I know many users who use Zapier. Uh, some use Parabola. There's another one out there, Parabola. Um, or no, it is Parabola. No, Parabola, there's one more. Can't think of it right now. Somebody probably knows it from the top of their head here. Um, Parabola, Zapier, and in Integromat, is that it? No, it's not Integromat, is it? Yeah, Integ Integromat, yeah. Yep, Integromat. So Zapier, Parabola, and Integromat are different services you can use to integrate other technology into your website to create kind of a similar web app. So yeah, I would just maybe talk to your developer and see if it's something that's plausible with Webflow, you know, and uh, see if it's achievable, what you're trying to, uh, trying to accomplish. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Jetboost, yeah, I think Jetboost as well. Um, Jetboost. Yeah, there's an article on integrating Jetboost for like search. I think Jetboost is more search uh, related, but yeah. So cool, we had fun with this build. We added audio, we created the menu button, and nice. All right, so yeah, this project will be clonable. Um, not super like a fan of this layout here in this site, but it's just a quick build. So we were more focusing on the menu and the sound effects.
All right. Yeah. So that is it for today's live stream. Uh, as far as the build, I, I might fix the menu here. Let me do it now, actually. So it closes a bit quicker. Uh, menu close. So we want to start everything together. So rotate and then Yeah, we'll start that together, except the movement this time will be delayed by one second. And the opacity, that's fine. Yeah, the opacity comes into 100. This should also be after one second, I think. And then these menu bars should be, so zero, okay start here so delay is 0 0.1 and 0.2 let's try that all right close perfect yes that's exactly what I wanted to do um, awesome yeah it will be clonable um, I'll go ahead and uh, publish it so you guys can check it out on your end and I'll post the link here but it will be clonable. You'll get to see my site structure, the class naming, and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a good heading. I'd probably say building websites that are out of this world or I don't know, something weird. <laughs> like, and the, the arrow would have been a nice touch. We didn't get to that today. but we got the sound effects, we used howler.js, and yeah, so yeah, fun fun build, cool. You can integrate Calendly in Webflow, it's actually pretty straightforward, I believe, and Webflow has a video on it, so Calendly Webflow, I think McGuire did a video, uh, yeah, there's a video right here on how to add a calendar to your Webflow site, so I'll post it, I'll post it in the chat, Kavita. Yeah, for sure. Happy to help, Echoed. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been recommend. I mean, I recommend Webflow to everyone. I know some projects might um, need more like web app features. So what I've also seen users do is that they just link out to a different service. Like if they can't integrate it directly using Webflow, they just you know post a link that links out to another service. Um, I know my wife, She's she works with Webflow and she does just basically the marketing pages for the, the business. And then they use other third party services, but they link out to those services. Um, but yeah, but it, ideally you, you probably would want all the services and functionality in the site. So I, I, I definitely get that. Um, yeah, so howler.js, very cool script by Goldfire, um, yeah, and you can do a lot more with it, but it's just a cool way to add audio to a website. Nice, so we have seven minutes left. Um, let me see if there's any, if uh, Joey Joe had any questions or just being really generous, yeah, just being generous. Thank you, Joey Joe, appreciate the super chat. Uh, Pablo wrote, quick question, John, have you ever used robot.txt? I know it is on the project settings, but it, it, is it just using the URL robot.txt? Um, yeah, so robots.txt, um, it's usually in the project settings under SEO, and you can add a custom sitemap. Yeah, so you need a site plan to add a robots.txt file. Um, so, yeah, I've never quite used it myself. I know users use it to block search engines from accessing specific pages. Like, um, you know, you type in using robots.txt file. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, robots.txt. 
Yeah, a file that gives web robots instructions on which page you want them to crawl or ignore on your site. This can be useful for preventing duplicate content from being indexed in search engines, but not a good way to hide information. Um, so yeah, I've, I've dealt with robots.txt quite a few times, uh, especially in support. Um, but yeah, I just see it as a way to to block pages. So like <clears throat> you type in block pages using robots.txt, it comes up with the code that you need to use. Um, yeah, so it's like disallow. I've seen that a couple times. And hold on, let me go into Safari. Um, and yeah, so like you use disallow and stuff like that to prevent pages from being accessed by the search engines. Uh, hopefully that answered the question, Pablo. Uh, so Joey Joe wrote, can you make a tutorial about how to build real estate agency website? I would be thankful. Um, yeah, Joey Joe, can you send me an example of a site that you have in mind? Just send it to webdevforyou.com. Send it to my contact form and I can take a look and then we can start building something like that. Um, a, real, a real estate agency website is a bit more it depends because real estate agencies they have that system I don't know exactly what it's called it's like an MS something like that allows you to like link into uh, actual listings in your city or area so there's there's like a sophisticated system that real estate agents real estate agents want integrated into their site unless the real estate agent knows exactly what properties they want to display on their site then they could just build it in the cms right like build a collection of properties and then create a collection list or add a collection list to a page and showcase the properties that way and get more descriptive of each property on each collection template page um, so i don't know what that system is called that real estate agents use um, real estate agent system CRM, I think, yeah, CRM system. Um, no, that's not it. No, that's customer relation management. Um, real estate agent property management software. Yeah, it's something like that. Like they use a specific software or um, feature to showcase properties. So I'm not sure which one that is, but you could probably also like a lot of these different sites also embed MLS. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Um, real estate agent. MLS system. Yeah. MLS, yep. Yeah. yeah, so I've seen a few real estate agents integrate that multiple list. Yeah, that's exactly it, uh, Dale. Yep. But it, it depends, you know, like I can kind of showcase how to build the layout of a real estate website. Um, and let's see if there's a Webflow real estate template. I don't know if there is. There is, yeah. So let's look at one. This one looks nice, homely. You can preview in the, the designer and kind of get a feel for how they built it. Um, yeah, like this is this is exactly what I would do. You know, you create, they have a CMS with properties, exactly what I just mentioned. The properties here, the property features, property categories, agents, and all that good stuff. So, you know, you go in, you can add multiple images. And so if like we were to preview this site um, and we go into a listing, we go into it, there's more images, they can open the light box, there's tabs, or let's see, I guess it's just a, just a menu. The real estate agent, properties, all that good stuff. 
so I can cover this in more detail if you want um, Pablo or was it Pablo that asked or Joey Joe um, yeah and there's a search looks really nice looks great and yeah it's just a nice way to to showcase different properties yeah I, I can showcase that uh, tomorrow we'll cover that uh, tomorrow for sure um, the layout would take time to build but I'll just do something real quick it won't be super fancy or designed um, but we'll go through creating the collections the property collections and we'll take a look to see what type of collection field we would need for a property probably like price uh, location maybe a rich text or we could probably do it all with text fields where we can describe the property in more detail um, so let's go in here and let's actually take a look at this template and let's see what they added for the property so yeah property address overview yeah overview address city images price but number of bedrooms number of bathrooms so yeah all that kind of makes sense uh, size of the block that's cool property features property category and property agents yeah so that's a great way to create a property listing and they're, they're referencing these um, these features and they've styled okay so that's empty okay so I got I got yeah that's okay this template was probably built earlier but I got kind of told um, it's fine uh, that collection template pages all had to be designed um, but I can see this one isn't designed so they kind of got away with this one M must have been earlier because the templates they change sometimes the structure and the guides so anyway that's going off on a tangent there uh, yeah hopefully my template comes out soon I have a new template coming out that I'm super excited about um, and I'm ha gonna be really happy to share that so yeah yeah for sure Manuel um, yeah you can just go into the templates and look at how they built it like there's no secrets really to, to you know how to build a really good site you can just look at a template and be like oh they did it this way maybe I can grab some ideas from that um, yeah excuse me yeah or if you want to buy a template to get started quickly you can do that and all that good stuff so I like that I do these live streams because I've already had maybe yeah there was one person who bought one of my templates and they needed help and I was able to help them right on the live stream so just a quick quick and easy way for me to provide support as well I do like to provide support for my templates and uh, anything I release like that so awesome I think that's it no more talking from me we built this menu cool yo cool cool and let me refresh that Did I publish because it should close right away now no it doesn't so I must have not published anywho uh, this will be clonable thanks everyone for watching Joey Joe will cover that tomorrow um, yeah thanks everyone who joined uh, yeah Joey Joe Dale uh, Janssen I think I pronounced that correctly Pablo Kavita um, Echo thanks you thanks for joining great questions uh, hopefully you, you'll find Webflow helpful uh, Richard Eric Manuel Isaiah uh, awesome Tazaware Rashid thank you thank you thanks for joining and we will see you tomorrow thank you peace